Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and in this video we're going to have a little discussion about the mixture controller. This fella right here. The mixture control is used to lean the air fuel ratio. So as we gain altitude the air gets thinner, right? We've discussed that in previous videos. But the fuel doesn't. So we need to not allow as much fuel to be drawn into the cylinder to maintain the proper air fuel ratio. So I've broken this video down into two parts. For those of you who just want to know how to use it, the first part will show you that we're going to fly around under 3,000 feet where we do not need to make any adjustments for the mixture. And then we'll go up to 7,000 feet where the air is thinner and we'll have to make the adjustments. And I will show you what you need to do and how you know you have the mixture set correctly. All right, we're cruising along here at uh, just over 2,000 feet. So we're under that 3,000 foot marker there for using a mixture control. Now remember, the mixture controller is right here. And as we gain altitude, we need to pull this out, and this will lean the mixture going into the engine. That means it's going to have a little less fuel going into the engine. That's because we have less air. So we need to match the air and the fuel together to maintain a specific air-fuel ratio that was designed for the engine. There are two ways that you can know that you have the right air-fuel mixture. One is by looking at the RPMs, and as you use the mixture control, it'll affect the RPM of the engine because you're changing the air-fuel ratio. The other is to use the exhaust gas temperature. Not all airplanes have uh, EGT uh, gauge, so we're not going to bother too much with that. But this works right off the exhaust gas temperature, and there's a probe in the exhaust, and it measures the temperature. As you lean the engine, it'll run hotter. So this exhaust gas temperature will go up. And of course, if you richen the engine or get too much gas in it, then this temperature is going to go down. But we're not going to deal with that. It's much easier just to use the RPM to get the correct fuel ratio setting. So we are at 2,000 feet. Our air fuel ratio is fine. If I were to operate the controller, our RPM is going to drop because we are leaning the mixture. We already have the, the right fuel ratio. So when I pull this out, notice the RPM immediately starts to drop. I'm putting less fuel into the engine for the amount of air. Naturally, we're going to start slowing down. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we get to 7,000 feet. All right, here we are cruising at right around 7,000 feet. Notice the mixture control is still all the way in. Not good. We need to make an adjustment. The problem we have now is too much fuel for the amount of air that's being drawn into the engine. So we're running too rich. That'll make uh, the the spark plugs foul, the engine won't run very well, uh, things will clog, it's not a good situation. So we need to make a correction here. And the way you do that is now we're going to watch the RPM. We're going to pull the knob out slowly. The RPM will come up and it'll reach a peak. And then it'll stop, it'll start dropping down again. And that's where we find the peak operation of the airplane or the engine. So let's do that. Let's bring the, uh, the controller out slowly and watch the RPM. All right, it's starting to climb. It's still climbing. You want to do this slowly. Now you're going to do this when you're cruising. You know, if you just go up to a high altitude for a little while and back down, that's not a big deal. But when you're on a cross country or you're cruising, uh, that's another problem. Now notice I've come out here and the RPM is dropping. So we passed that peak. Now we're going to push the controller back in and find that nice spot where we have our maximum RPM. And it looks like it's right there. Okay, so we found our peak. 
So after you find that peak, what you want to do is richen it just a little. Drop it 25 RPM or so. So you are running a little rich. So we're just going to push it a little farther and let the RPM get down just a little bit. The reason you do this is it's a little better for the engine to be a little on the rich side than on the lean side. So let's do this one more time so you really get the idea. We're just about 7,000 feet. Our mixture control is still full rich. So we want to make the adjustment, right? We need to lean out the mixture. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the mixture control out and we're going to watch the RPM. And it should increase as I bring it out. And we're going to go to a maximum reading there. All right, it's increasing, increasing, increasing. And right, then it starts to drop. So we're going to go back to that. This is our peak setting here. So we have the rich side of peak and the lean side of peak. We want to run on the rich side of peak. So we're going to drop this about 50 RPMs by pushing the controller back in to make sure it's running just a little bit richer. So we'll drop that down about 50, 25, 50 RPM. And this is just better for the engine. Because running too lean can really, really do serious damage to the engine pretty quickly. Now, I take it you noticed that these were very small adjustments here. We didn't have a huge swing in the RPM. This will depend on the altitude you're flying at and the conditions, too. You may have a much larger drop in RPM or much less. But the idea is to get to the peak and then richen it up a little bit by pushing the controller back in. There are other ways to do this, as I mentioned earlier, with the exhaust gas temperature, and some people even try to run on the lean side of peak. But just stick with this and you'll do fine. So that's how you lean the mixture on a piston engine, either carbureted or fuel injected. The process is the same. And of course, it works the opposite when you're descending, right? If you've made this correction at 7,000 feet, when you're going back down, you need to richen up the mixture a little bit or you will still have a problem. So we always want to make sure that we are maintaining the proper air-fuel ratio. Now I'm going to go into a little more detail on the mixture and how the engine works and all those things if you're interested. So continue on with part two of this video or you can just bail out now. I won't be offended. Thanks so much for watching and God bless. All right, to give you a visual of air fuel ratio, imagine these two columns represent the correct ratio for the sake of demonstration as i don't know what the real ratio is but let's say that that ratio is a hundred molecules of air for every one fuel molecule or a hundred to one ratio and with this air to fuel ratio the engine will run smoothly and be at its peak performance now imagine that we've climbed to an altitude of 7,000 feet, but we did not make the adjustments for the fuel on the way up. When we got to 7,000 feet, we would have too much fuel and not enough air because, as mentioned earlier, the air gets thinner the higher we go. And since the fuel stays the same, it does not get thinner with altitude. Our air-fuel mixture is off. Have you ever been behind a car belching out black smoke from its tailpipe? Well, that's because the engine gets too much fuel to the cylinders, and the engine cannot burn all that fuel before it's exhausted from the cylinder, hence the black smoke. Too much fuel for the amount of air will cause the engine to run rough, eventually fouling the spark plugs. The engine will run cooler than normal, and this will cause other problems as well. All right, now let's assume that we made all the necessary mixture adjustments all the way up to 7,000 feet and everything's fine. But on our descent, we forgot to make the corrections. So now we have too much air and not enough fuel. This will make the engine run hotter than normal 
eventually burning the valves and really damaging the engine. In both these cases, not enough fuel or too much fuel will cause all kinds of problems with your engine. And you could find yourself in a really bad situation. So it's very important to maintain the proper air-fuel ratio. Let's take a look at how a piston engine works. I'll discuss the carbureted engine. However, this works the same for a fuel-injected engine. Now this is a picture I've got from Chapter 7 of the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. And this is a fuel injection system. They don't show a carbureted system. But basically they're the same. We have a four-cylinder engine. One, two, three, four cylinders. And we have fuel going to each one of the cylinders. In this case, it's through a fuel injection system. If it was a carburetor, then this would be a carburetor system. There would be a manifold going to this system. But the idea is pretty much the same. We have four cylinders. Each cylinder fires separately, and the firing order might be one, three, two, four, or something like that. So let's take a look at the engine on a Cessna 172, a four cylinder carbureted engine, and we'll go through the firing sequence and the operation of the carburetor. Unlike a car engine, aircraft have two spark plugs for each cylinder and they use a magneto to fire the spark plugs. This is for safety reasons. In case one of the plug fails, you still have a spark plug and your engine keeps running. And the magneto doesn't use the electrical system in the airplane, so if the engine's electrical system fails, the engine will keep running. And again, you can read more about this in the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 7. And I'll put that information up later on in this video. But right now we're going to take a look at how a engine operates, a four-cycle engine. The Cessna 172 has a four-cylinder, four-cycle engine. And this image here displays the four different cycles. So we have an intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Those are the four cycles, and they repeat over and over and over again. The piston goes down, it draws the air-fuel mixture into the cylinder. The crankshaft turns, pushing the piston back up. This compresses the air-fuel mixture. And then, at the right moment, the valves are closed, the two spark plugs fire. This causes an explosion in the cylinder, driving the piston back down. And then as it comes around again, the exhaust valve will open and the exhaust gases will be exhausted from the engine and then we start over. The intake valve opens, drawing the fuel mixture in and we go around and around and around. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. So that's a carbureted system. When the piston goes down, it draws the air-fuel mixture in. In a fuel-injected system, only the air will be drawn into the cylinder and then the fuel will be injected later. That's basically the difference between fuel injection and carburation. Carburetor, the fuel and air are drawn in at the same time through the intake manifold. In a fuel injected engine, only the air is drawn in and then the fuel injected later. The rest is the same. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Now let's take a look at the carburetor and see how it works. This is a cutaway of an updraft carburetor. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail and explain this. You can read about this in the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. I'll put the link up to it a little later. What we're concerned with is this mixture needle. This is what we are operating when we operate the mixture control. This needle controls the amount of fuel that gets to the fuel nozzle. So we have the air inlet. As the piston goes down, we draw the air up through the carburetor and it mixes the fuel. Depending on where this rod is, we'll determine how much fuel is drawn in. And this is how we control the air-fuel mixture. But Take a look at this if you want more info on the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 7.
For you folks who are flying the fuel injection engine, I'm sorry I don't have a cutaway or can show you how that actually works, but the principle is the same. It's going to control the amount of fuel that is injected into the cylinder. All right, again, you can find all this information at the FAA.gov website. Go to the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, and on Chapter 7, you can read all about aircraft systems, the engines, the cylinders, how everything works. So that's it for my little video on the mixture control for a piston engine, carbureted and fuel injected. If you like this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave a comment or send me a message, that would be great. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.